Okay, uh, welcome to the cabinet meeting of Monday the 8th of February 2021. It's two o'clock, so I will start. Um, first of all, is there any apologies for absence? And looking around me, uh, I don't think there are. Um, next item is minutes of the last meeting. Can I ask if anybody's happy to approve them, please? We're happy to second, Leader. Good, thank you. Is that agreed? Good. Thank you. Next item is to receive any declarations of interest uh, in relation to uh, any of the reports. And I, I have one, and I know that Margaret has one too. I will go first. Uh, I have to declare a member of my family works for the authority, but I do have um, a dispensation to speak, to vote, and to remain in the meeting. Uh, Margaret, I think you have a similar uh, declaration. Exactly the same. Uh, I have two members of my family work for the authorities, and I have had uh, the same uh, as you. The sensations, okay, yeah. that's good. I don't think there's anyone else who is not. Okay, the next item is, um, well, before I go on to that, what I will say a couple of words about the pandemic, as I normally do. Um, I'm not going to go into any detail today. Uh, I just want to reiterate the fact that the pandemic is still with us. Rates are beginning to, 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 to um, go down a little. So can I thank anybody who is complying with the restrictions. I know there are still some difficulties with people wanting to exercise and uh, thinking they can drive to places when, uh, in fact, uh, I know there's, there's issues about that. So um, the other thing is that the three uh, mass vaccination centres are now up and running. So the final, the final one in, in, the, in the Cardiff and the Vale is in the home view, which should start running, I think, should have been an hour ago. Um, but what I would say is people will be invited to whichever mass vaccination centre or their GP and that they should um, wait for their appointments to, to, to go to those particular areas. Um, and the last thing I want to say is even if you have the first inoculation, you have to remember that you are not free from catching COVID-19 at least for 21 days and even after that. So it is not until you have the second dose that you are for, you are more protected. But again, uh, when you have the vaccination, there is a possibility that you could still spread the disease. So there is still the need, whether you've had the vaccination or otherwise, to take all the precautions that are necessary, wear a mask, keep apart, um, and stay at home wherever you can and work uh, from home wherever you can. So I will leave it at that, but I will thank everybody for helping to comply with the restrictions. Okay, uh, I have one reference, which is the Corporate Risk Register for quarter two, and it's an update from the Audit Committee on the 14th of December. Um, the, corp the, the Corporate Risk Register was, was considered by the Audit Committee. Um, they basically uh, indicated there were 16 corporate risks in the register during the quarter two period. Um, there were some which were in constant flux, those two particularly were the COVID-19 and Brexit risks, which meant the position regarding those two were constantly evolving. Um, in terms of the COVID-19, uh, there was a series of new restrictions put in place. As everybody knows, uh, there was some support for businesses which would uh, which were announced through the uh, 300 million pounds in financial support for further to further complement the UK government, which came from uh, the Welsh government to, to support the furlough scheme. Um, the council processed 1,395 non-domestic grant applications and issued over 4.2 million in grant payments to local businesses. The council has also supported administration of discretionary payments to those businesses. And as of 20th of November, which is the date uh, when this was written, there was a total 88,000 pounds of discretionary grants had been processed. Um, and indeed, they are, they are continuing to go forward. Um, we're also supporting the administration of the 18 self eighteen self isolation grants, the value of five, 500 pounds. Um, the head of uh, policy and transfer and business transformation co 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 commented in, in at that time that the number of cases had risen to 344 per 100,000. Uh, clearly, that is now reduced somewhat, thankfully. Um, in terms of Brexit, which is one of the major risks uh, over the last m nine months, much has been focused on on pandemic, which you would automatically uh, assume to be the case. 
Um, we have now ended the transition case and an update on the Brexit development was outlined in a report to Cabinet on the 30th of November. Um, in terms of, in terms of um, uh, testing, there was a comment made about testing about the universal lateral flow test in schools, but clearly that's only a test and not, not a final test. It's a screening method, not anything else. Um, but basically, as far as regard to the, the other key risks, the head of policy and business highlighted that the risk scores for information security, waste management, integrated social care and health had reduced, and the risk score for environmental sustainability, welfare reform, reshaping services and the 21st century programme had increased. However, uh, having had all, all that information, the uh, the audit committee actually noted the report and referred it to us for consideration. And there is a report later in the agenda, which I will deal with uh, in relation to that. But currently, the recommendation is that it be noted. Uh, I will do that, but then I will refer further to it uh, in, in, the, in the agenda report. So can I say that in terms of the um, reference, we note the auditors, uh, the, um, or the 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 uh, audit committee's recommendation. Is that agreed? It's a formally second. Thank you. Um, right. In relation to the, there's the number five is a re in relation to the pay policy for 21-22. I will be taking that to the end of the agenda, and the reason for that is because it deals with uh, staff pay, and at that time, all members of the senior management team, in fact, all officers, will leave this meeting, with the exception of our our clerk. Uh, who will be still be taking the minutes. So just for clarity, um, they will not be part or, or party to, I should say, uh, listening to in or uh, given any information in relation to the pay policy, which I will take to the end. Okay, um, and I've now gone out the sink because I've got papers in the wrong order. I, I will now come to the corporate risk register for um, quarter two update. Um, as I said, this is just an update on quarter two position of the risks. The report does provide an overview of the corporate risk for the quarter two, which is April to September 20. And a risk analysis is incorporated in the corporate risk summary, which is at your appendix at appendix A. This does enable officers to and members to identify asset trends and the cross-cutting nature of the risk and the ability to drill down and detail the risks where required. Um, I, I give you some information in relation to um, uh, the reference, so I won't go into that. Uh, but the corporate risk summary reported appendix A is split into seven inter intersections, seven sections. Uh, it has a corporate risk executive summary, which is uh, the summary of, of it all. But then we do have the seven risks areas, which are covered in, in the report on page two and three which takes you from uh, paragraph 2.3 to 2.9. Um, as I said earlier, there are 16 corporate risks in the register. Um, some of them are in constant flux, as I said, and basically was, as I also said, COVID-19 and the Brexit risks meant that there were two constant evolve evolving areas. Basically, Cabinet are requested to, to, to consider an endorsed quarter to uh, position of the risk register whilst noting the references from audit committee, which we have then, and the following developments. These developments are accurate as of the 19th of January, 2021. Um, before I go to the recommendations, what I would also remind you is at 2.18, it tells you that uh, at, at not only is uh, attached to the appendix A is the quarter two risk summary report, but there's also appendix B, which complain, com, provides a complete corporate risk register. Um, I have nothing further to say, on, 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 and, I, and I echo the, the sentiments of the audit, audit committee. But there are some recommendations, um, which I'm, I'm going to ask you to look at. One is that, that it's recommended the cabinet note the quarter two position of the corporate risk for the period April to September 2020, as outlined in Appendix A, and as referenced in, in, in from the audit committee, so that we would note that position. And that two, it is recommended the cabinet consider and endorse the corporate risk register for quarter two and the associated corporate risk summary. So basically, I'm asking you to note the position and also endorse 
the, 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 the contents within the corporate risk register, which are substantial. I don't know if has got any comments to make. No. Oh, that, except that, to uh, form the second. Thank you very much. I'm glad about that. Okay, thank you. Put that to one side. The next item is the uh, revised initial budget proposals. Um, basically, the report before you presents the revised initial revenue budget proposals for 21 22. If you recall, on the 30th of November, Camera considered the initial budget and the proposals were subsequently considered by all scrutiny committees during December. The Council's budget is determined largely by the settlement provided by the Welsh Government, um, but that at the time had not been announced uh, when the initial budget was considered. Therefore, some assumptions had to be made at that time. Uh, these, um, these related to the likely settlement from the Welsh Government and the possible increase in Council tax. The initial estimates also modelled the impact of three possible changes to our settlement, an increase of 1%, a reduction of 1% and a cash neutral settlement. We also modelled the impact of two council tax increases, 4.9%, which was the same increase in the current year, and 8.4%, which would take the council tax to the at Welsh average. The impact of this modelling resulted in possible shortfalls in funding between £8.6 million and £12.8 million in the coming financial year. And that was assuming a council tax increase of 4.9%. As you know, the draft settlement was announced on the 22nd of December. The average uplift across Wales was 3.8%, with the range being between 2 and 5.6%. The council received an increase of 4.9%, uh, and the key drivers for this increase are increasing population and pupil numbers. So due to the better than anticipated uplift, the budget working group has reconsidered the budget uh, the, and, and the budget options and the revised budget proposal has been drafted and is detailed in the report today. The key assumptions made in these revised budget proposals are, one, no allowance has been made for, for price increase inflation. Two, that the settlement from Welsh Government has, uh, has assumed a 0% pay award for staff in our coming year. But I will make an echo point to you. This, this is not being finalised as such. There, as, and I say that because the, the, the negotiations in terms of pay for staff are yet to start. So this can be, uh, can't be guaranteed. And therefore, for an average pay award, uh, there has been some assumptions assumed in the revised estimates. So we, we can't go forward without assuming that there are going to be some increases in, in, in the payments in salaries. Um, if not, if we didn't, then we'd have to find them from somewhere else. It would either mean cutting services or uh, taking money from reserves. And I think it's safer to actually put something in there at this stage. Also in November, uh, cost pressures were shown as 10.2 million pounds. Uh, and these again have been revised and the estimates uh, uh, during the estimate time um, and it's now to assume that it's going to be £8.4 million pounds, uh, are funded in, in the new financial year. So there were cost pressures of £10.2 million. Pounds. There are still cost pressures, even after taking some of the, those out, of £8.4 million. Pounds. Also at that time in November, there were savings of £116,000 and they'd already approved, been approved for next year. These have also been revised in, uh, in the estimates and now there is an increase of, of, of savings has gone up to half a million pounds, 500,000 pounds. We've also assumed the council tax increase is reduced from an estimate of 4.9% to 3.9%. So in other words, uh, we've taken into, into account the fact that we've had a better the settlement than we thought. Uh, we still have those massive cost pressures and we still have to make those savings, but we're still pr pr proposing a 3.9% council tax in increase. In terms of, I can't say anything without talking about COVID-19 and the pandemic, um, because that's been felt both operationally and financially, and has resulted in additional expenditure being occurred together with loss of income. And what I would echo the point here is we still don't know whether or not the pandemic will continue after the new financial year. I think it will. Uh, and we still are unclear as to whether or not we will still get the support that we're currently having from Welsh Government. Um, but thus far, funding has been received from Welsh Government 
to this year to help support this this financial impact. However, there's huge uncertainty, as I said, uh, as to how the picture will develop over the coming months, and therefore it's very difficult to provide predictions for the coming year and beyond. The assumptions within these estimates are that any ongoing financial impact on council services from the COVID in the coming year will be supported by Welsh Government, but there is no guarantee. The council is therefore required to, to uh, under statute to fix the level of council tax for 21-22 by the 11th of March. And in order to do so, we have to agree a balanced revenue budget by the same date. So the next steps uh, for the estimates, uh, they, they, are to be, they are to be considered by the Corporate Performance and Resources Committee on the 11th of February. And the comments from that committee will be considered by the Cabinet on the 22nd of February when the final budget proposals will be considered. The final decision will be made by the Council on the 10th of March 2021. Okay, um, I think it will be interesting to see at this stage what if what Scrutiny Committee come back to, and that's why we need to review it on the 22nd of February. It's recommended therefore that the revised initial budget for proposed for 21-22 be approved and referred to for consultation with the, with the Corporate Performance Resources Scrutiny Committee, that the recommendations of the Corporate Performance and Resources Scrutiny Committee, and if you remember, they are the lead committee for this, for this particular purpose, are forwarded to Cabinet for consideration as part of the final budget determinations. Um, I, 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 I don't at this stage intend to say any more. We still have a long way to go. There are still many, many pressures upon us. Um, and I don't know if anybody's going to make any comments in relation to the report thus far. Uh, no, I, I won't make any comments, Lydia, because I think there are lots of opportunities to still discuss the content, but I will formally second this report. Thank you very much. Anybody else got any other comments to make? No? Good. Thank you, Anakis. Yes, we look forward to it going to the scrutiny committee and then coming back to us for final determination. The next item is uh, a finan the final capital proposals, the so capital strategy and the final capital proposals for 21-22 to 25-26. This report presents the final capital proposals. Uh, the initial capital proposal again went to the 30th of November and at that stage we hadn't received the provisional settlement. As you know, uh, we know, as I said earlier, we've referred to scrutiny committee. Comments from the scrutiny committee have been taken into account in the development of this five-year program. Um, we know that the provisional settlement came in in December and uh, these figures have informed the capital program in the five years too. All the bids have been prioritized that came in and the contribution they make to the well-being and future generations criteria. Um, the program detailed in this report will be funded through a number of different sources, including the general capital fund uh, from Welsh government, the use of capital receipts resulting from the sale of assets, the use of reserves that have been established for that purpose, section 106 monies, or borrowing money, which has to be repaid through the revenue budget. So the proposed program for 21-22 to 25-26 is attached at Appendix 1 and shows a total spend of £107.5 million pounds in 21-22 and a total five-year programme in excess of £249 million. Pounds. The programme includes £480,000 for road resurfacing. Welsh Government has indicated that the Highways Refurbishment Grant will continue and that the capital programme will be amended accordingly when a formal offer letter has been received. I make a comment in relation to that on the basis that one of the comments that came from Scrutiny Committee was that they wanted us to uh, make sure that there was money in, 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 the, in the proposals. At that time, we didn't know whether or not the grant was coming through, so we did put money in there. As the, the money is coming through, then there has been an amendment within, within, the, um, with, within the plan. Um, in terms of um, the total Band B programme for the 21st century schools, that's allocated at £136 million. Pounds. Uh, it's in anticipated that £118 million pounds will be spent between 21-22 and 24-25, so a substantial amount. The report also details the levels of investment required to maintain the WHQS standards, flood prevention works, funding for disabled facility grants and 
funding in relation to the Barry Regeneration Partnership. Again, the next steps is that this will go to corporate performance on the 11th of February, come back to Cabinet on the 22nd, and again, finally made a final decision made at Council on the 21st of March. If you look within the, the report itself, um, it, it does give you some indication on, on paragraph 2.2, talks about the general capital fund for, for 21-22 for Wales as a whole will continue to be set at 198 million pounds. Included in within this round is 20 million for the con con continuation of the public highways refurbishment grant. 54 million is, for, is of historic baseline general capital grant and a continuation of an additional 35 million general capital grant, which was announced as part of the budget. Uh, this additional 35 million pounds will enable the council to start to respond to our joint priority of decarbonisation, including housing and economic recovery following COVID-19. Um, there are some issues in, in, in relation to this too. Um, in terms of some of the spending that we've got forward. But basically, the recommendations are that um, the final capital programme for the years 21, 22 to 25, 26, as set out in Appendix 1, be approved. Two, that the Cabinet refer the final capital proposals 21, 22 to 25, 26 to the Corporate Performance Resources Scrutiny Committee for review and the comments of the Scrutiny Committee referred back to Cabinet. The Cabinet approved the reprofiling of the Band B programme for schools investment uh, for the years 21, 20, 21 and 25, 26, as shown in paragraphs 230 of this report. And that was one of the things I was going to mention, and I didn't. Uh, so I will refer you to that. I won't read it, but I'll refer you to it. Um, the Cabinet also approves the reprofiling of the housing investment programme for the years 21, 22 to 25, 26, as shown again in paragraphs 235 of the report. And I will refer you specifically to that part of the report, and I won't, but I won't read it out. And um, the Cabinet also approved the reprofiling -pro of the city deal scheme for the years 2021, 20, 22 to 25, 20, 20, 25, 26, again, as shown in paragraph 223 of this report. So again, I will refer you to those references, but make no comment because you can read them for yourself. Um, I have no other further comments other than, other than to move the recommendations. I don't know if anybody else has got any comments to make, please. I will lead her if I could. Um, you can, you can indeed. Firstly, to um, welcome the continued investment in our schools and uh, I've uh, been watching with interest the, the amazing progress of the three secondary schools in Barry um, and also if I could to formally second. Good, thank you very much. Um, that's a very comprehensive uh, report and there's a massive amount of spending on the right things. Okay, if nobody else got any comments, I will go to the next item which is item nine and that's the comprehensive uh, regeneration of land at the Butts, which is uh, in Cowbridge. So I'll go over to Liz, I think, on this one, please. Me, I'm just juggling my computers. Um, yes, this is, this is the comprehensive regeneration of the land at the Butts, which most people would know as the former livestock market, um, and also in enhancement of car park land alongside the town wall. Um, as, as you know, the, the Vailable Morgan Council owns the freehold interest of vacant land located alongside the butts in Cowbridge, um, and that's indicatively identified edged in red in Appendix A uh, attached to this report, which was previously a livestock market. The council proposes facilitating the regeneration of the site by marketing um, the land for a food retail use including the provision of publicly available car parking and I think that's an important thing to state. As part of, of, of this process, as is usual, um, the purpose of the report is to declare the land a surplus to the council's requirements and seek authority to market and dispose of the land for redevelopment, which is subject of course to statutory consent. On this basis, the land will be marketed and disposed of for food retail use and the provision of publicly available car parking with the aim of creating vital new jobs 
and encouraging greater retail spend to stay in the town, thereby boosting the local economy. Um, I think that many people will know that people are, are tra travel out, so out of Cowbridge down to Bridge End or to Culverhouse Cross to do larger food shops and we want to retain that spend in the town centre. Um, a, a food retail development proposal would at planning, state, uh, planning application stage be subject to a retail need assessment and impact assessment um, so that any proposals would be would su be subject to any prospective developer proving um, that there was sufficient capacity in the Cowbridge retail area to warrant such a use uh, without significantly harming the Cowbridge town centre. This is about getting a, a, a positive development for the town. Subject to, to the assessment, it's anticipated a medium sized food, re food retailer at this location would improve the retail office offer of Cowbridge town centre, making it more resilient by reducing the need for residents to travel further afield to shop for food, which, as I mentioned, which is in turn also more environmentally sustainable. Considering uh, the conservation area status of the site, an emphasis will be made on scheme designs being sensitive to the historic context of the land and its proximity to the town wall. Um, and importantly, the disposal of the main site would bring into the town a much needed major capital investment. This is essential to raise funds um, to facilitate the physical improvement of the car parking areas alongside the town wall. I think we've all seen the, the amazing work that was done on the town wall uh, a couple of years ago, but that, that car park surface itself actually could benefit from, from attention. So hence this project offers the opportunity to afford to deliver the comprehensive master plan regeneration of the council's land either side of the butt. And the report also refers, and this is an important point to note, the ongoing work associated with the agri -hub, hub concept to serve the farming industry in the Vale of Morgan, um, and discussions continue with key farming stakeholders and other interested parties in how we can develop and, and, and establish such an agri -hub, hub to um, to, to support the agriculture industry in the Vale of Morgan. So the um, recommendations are one to seven. Um, and I, because there's a lot of legal stuff in here, I will read them out. So please bear with me. Um, recommendation one, the site indicatively edged red in Appendix A is declared as surplus. That um, authority is granted to the head of regeneration and planning in consultation with the leader, deputy leader and cabinet member for regeneration and planning. Ah, we need to change that. I missed that. It's the cabinet member for education regeneration. So we will need to change that. I'd missed it earlier. Uh, Managing Director and Head of Finance um, to market and dispose of the site as indicatively edged red on the plan at Appendix A by virtue of a 999 year lease and a peppercorn rental for a food retail use and publicly available car parking subject to statutory consent. That authority is granted for the property section of, to facilitate the marketing exercise and import, appoint any consultants required for project delivery. All the authority is granted for a project budget of £50,000 to cover the cost of internal technical salaries, marketing, advertising and promotion of the site as a development opportunity and also site surveys and for the capital programme to be amended appropriately if required. Five, the authority is granted for part or all of the capital receipt generated from the disposal of the land edged in red to be utilised towards the cost of implementing the physical enhancement, brackets including the resurfacing and laying out of the car parking area alongside the town wall subject to, to the works proceeding. And six, the authority is granted to the head of regeneration and planning, bracket, um, in consultation with the leader, deputy leader and cabinet member for, and that again should be education and regeneration, managing director and head of finance to let a works contract to physically enhance the car parking alongside the town wall subject to sufficient funding raised by the disposal of the land edged in red and to amend the capital programme accordingly. And finally, 
uh, that authority is granted to the monitoring officer, head of legal and democratic services to prepare, execute and complete all legal documentation required to facilitate the disposal of the site. Uh, I would so move. OK, I haven't got a problem with that and uh, welcome and uh, obviously the recommendation as amended. Has anybody got any comments to make? Because I think this is a, a positive way forward. Uh, we've we've moved moved along. We now have a, a site, an empty site, and we need to do something with it. And this is an ideal opportunity. Uh, ben, do you want to come in? Yeah, I'd like the chance to formally second um, the report. Um, um, myself and um, uh, Liz uh, met with the local members, uh, talked through the plans, and I, I think they're really exciting. Um, and I think that uh, there's been a lot of um, work done around uh, medium-sized food businesses being a driver for town centre, um, you know, regeneration. And I think, at, you know, the time where we're moving out of um, COVID restrictions and potential future developments, I think it'd be really positive for the centre of Cowbridge. So, um, yeah, re really happy to, to second this and look forward to seeing what uh, what comes forward um, from, from that exercise. Yep, indeed, I agree. Um, and and the fact that even though the market's now gone, we're still working with the industry to to, to try and progress that. Absolutely, absolutely. We, you know, we we need to make sure we we find that suitable site. Yes. Um, but for for today's agriculture needs, uh, and, I, and I really hope that can be somewhere between uh, the Vale and, and Bridge End um, in in that rurality. Yep. Good. Okay. If nobody else has got any further comments, then. That's agreed. Uh, go next to item 10, which is a proposal to establish a new centre for learning and wellbeing. Uh, Liz, it's over to you again, please. Thank you, Leader. And um, following on from my, my comment about how good it is to see us uh, investing in, uh, in schools, uh, capital investment in schools, um, the next two reports are um, exactly what we're, we're trying to do here. So this, this report um, uh, regarding the proposal to establish a new centre for learning and wellbeing and a specialist resource base at Gladstone Primary School, um, which would be managed by a school dairy from September 2021, um, have been, has, has been to Cabinet previously. And this is the outcome of the statutory notice um, part of, of, of that process. So, um, as I said, on, on the 16th of November last year, ca uh, Cabinet considered feedback submitted during the consultation period on the proposal to, to transform specialist education by, and that was the specialist uh, resource base at Gladstone Primary School um, as a satellite of, of Eskola Derry uh, from September this year, discontinuing a DITH and establishing a new centre for learning and well-being and the management of Eskola Derry, also from September 2021 and construct, constructing a new building for the Centre for Learning and Wellbeing Pupils on the Court Road Depot site in Barry, opening from January 2023. Um, so on, on the 16th of November, as I said, when, when Cabinet last discussed it, um, though we determined to, to progress the proposal through the publication of a statutory notice, which was published on the 25th of November, um, and Obviously, any person was able to object to the proposal within 28 days. Council received one objection by the end of 28 day period, um, and this objection has been summarised and responded to in the attached objection report for Cabinet to consider. Um, and the report is can be found at Appendix D. Um, we now need to, to make a decision on whether to implement the proposal to establish a new centre for learning and wellbeing and a specialist resource base at Gladstone Primary School, which would be managed um, by a scholar dairy. I think it's worth looking back that even when we did the consultation, there was there was widespread support for this proposal. Um, you know, out of 44 responses received in relation to Gladstone, 30 were for and only two against the establishment of this centre for learning and well-being 44 responses 32 in favour and the the establishment of the centre for learning and well-being on court road 44 responses 40 in favour so that was the initial consultation in this one 
there's a, a only been one. So the recommendations going forward are that Cabinet continue, considers this report, the consultation document, um, the consultation report, the statutory notice, the formal objection and the objection report, which, which responds to that. Two, the Cabinet approves implementation of the proposal by making a regulated alteration under Section 2.1 of the School Organisation Code 2018 and, and doing so by establishing a specialist resource base at Gladstone Primary School as a site, satellite of Escola Dairy from September 2021. Discontinuing a DICE and establishing a new centre for learning and wellbeing and the management of Escola Dairy from September 2021. And finally, constructing a new building for the Centre for Learning and Wellbeing pupils uh, on the Court Road depot site in Barry from January 2023. Thirdly, the Cabinet notes that the major investment towards a new school building set out in the proposal is subject to necessary funding being approved by Welsh Government, as it always is. Um, and, and finally, and before that, Cabinet notes that implementation of the proposals is dependent on the existing council services currently operating from Court Road Depot um, are, are relocated to an alternative site. But uh, on, on that note, um, I would so move, Leader. No, I think that's fine. Um, I concur with the comments you make. Uh, it's been uh, it's been run by Pascal um, Derry. Um, I have no issue, issues with it. I don't know if anybody has any comments. If not, I will formally second. Um, and if there aren't any others, then that is approved. Thank you. The next item is item 11, which is an update on a proposal to increase Ascola Derry to meet future demand for special education needs in available Morgan. Thank you, Peter. And um, this, this is sort of back one stage in terms of consultation um, from the, the previous report. So the purpose of this report is to advise Cabinet on the outcome of the statutory consultation on the proposal uh, to increase the capacity of Escola Derry to accommodate an additional 150 pupils and construct a new school building on the preferred site located in Cosmeston, Penarth um, for September 2023, which would operate as an additional site under the management of, of Escola Derry. Um, the Council received 102 responses by the closing date of, of the 20th of September, September, December, can't, I can't speak today, 2020. Cons consultees were asked to indicate whether they support, do not support or have no opinion on the proposal. Um, and of the 102 individual responses received, 90 were in favour of the proposal. Uh, so absolutely super response. 11 were opposed and one stated no opinion either way. A summary of key themes and issues raised during that consultation exercise is included in the consultation report attached at Appendix B. Following the completion of the consultation period, um, a decision is now required on whether to progress the proposals further with the publication of the proposal for the regulated alteration in the form of a statutory notice. So we would then go on to the, the phase we've just completed with the previous ones. Um, I think on, on that note, what I have to say is, is we've always been committed to providing excellence in education for the children of the Vale of Glamorgan. And <coughs> I am really, really, really pleased that what we can demonstrate is a commitment to our children that whatever the challenges they face, whatever their educational needs, we will fight to, su to, to su supply the correct type and quality of education that they deserve. So um, on that note, the recommendations that I would like to put forward are that Cabinet considers this report, the consultation report and other appendices included as part of this report, which includes minutes of the Learning and Culture Scrutiny Committee uh, meeting held on the 10th of December 2020. And two, that Cabinet considers the proposal to increase the capacity of Escola Derry to accommodate an additional 150 pupils 
uh, and construct a new school building on the preferred site located in Cosmeston, Penarth for September 2023, which would operate as an additional site under the management of Escoladary. Three, that Cabinet approves the proposal through the publication um, of the proposal in the form of a statutory notice. And four, that Cabinet notes that the major investment towards a new school building set out in the proposal is subject to necessary funding being approved by Welsh Government. So thank you, Leader. I so move. Thank you. I think um, if this goes along with the, the previous report and, and the capital reports that we've, we've recently just de dealt with. Um, it's an obvious it's an obvious situation we have to increase the, our, our 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 supply of this type of accommodation and education so um, i'm happy to second and anybody have any comments to make anybody if there's not then i will approve that is approved and i will move on to the next report which is item 12 which is the flooding event on the 23rd of december 2020 and i'll over to peter please Better when I turn the, the mic on. Um, hi there, leader. Thanks ever so much. Um, we're all aware of the incredible rainfall in December that culminated in flash flooding at various locations in our county. December the 23rd was a ghastly time for such disruption to people's homes. And I know you all join me in my sincere and active concern for all of them. Bringing this report now is the earliest opportunity to capture the facts and allow scrutiny of the situation that arose, the initial works undertaken and the other help provided to date and to confirm that all the relevant organisations are cooperating. It also records that we have appointed a specialist independent consultant to investigate and produce what is termed a Section 19 report. And I hope that report will be completed by the 31st of March and a further report brought to this cabinet to consider its findings in more detail. That said, the contents of this report, report repeat, I said again, that said, the contents of this report, however factual, do not convey the misery such flooding causes, nor the ongoing anxiety felt by those affected. My heart goes out to all of those residents. I find it hard not to think that such extreme weather is a consequence of climate change and may not become so exceptional. Before I move to the recommendations, I just wonder if anybody else wants to add any comment. Uh, well, I, yeah, I will, because I, 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 it must be devastating to have, have a flood at any time, but to have it in the midwinter and a couple of days before Christmas is absolutely devastating. Um, I, you know, I remember when I was here last time when we had the floods in, was it, 2017, we thought they were exceptional, but things are clearly getting worse. Um, as I mentioned last year in, in the, when we were talk, talking about the budget, one of the reasons we needed some of the so, some of the issues was because of what happened in Ronda and Taff, and it's happened again, but it's also happened here. So um, I, 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 I'm anxious for the report to come forward. Uh, and as you say, our sympathy and, and commiserations go to everybody who's been affected. Um, I think somebody's got a hand up. Liz has got your hand up as well. Thank you, please. Yes, thanks, Lita. I, I just wanted to say, I mean, I, I was contacted by two families that were affected by flooding. Um, and in our position, I mean, I, I, I honestly did nothing more than to, to contact our officers. But the speed at which they sprang into action mm -hmm. and the support that they provided for those families um, was, was absolutely second to none. So I, I would like to put on record my thanks. I know that that is just a, a very small example of the scale of, of activities that went on over that really difficult period. But I, if I could put on record my, my huge thanks to our officers who, um, most most of whom, I mean, particularly in, in the neighbourhood services teams, were already dealing with some of the issues around pandemics and everything else and hoping for a bit of a Christmas themselves as well. And they didn't hesitate. They didn't hesitate to support local residents. So huge thanks from me. If you could pass it on, Peter. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. And I, and I know very well that, um, that, that we've worked with other community councils since then, again, as we did in 2016. 
um, or 2017, whatever it was, um, to, 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 to make sure that we can work in, in tandem with them and all the other agencies. Um, but this is, as you say, a holding report more than anything else. Yeah. Yeah, it, I'll, I'll move directly. You just prompted me to say, first of all, thank you for those kind comments about the, about um, our, our officers. But just another example is um, on the flooding claims um, front. Um, we have so far received 42 applications. 20 of them have been processed and nine payments are going through. Nine are only delayed by waiting for bank details. Um, two are going out for inspection because there, there no proof of flood damage is provided. So we, the, that, that, that continuing prompt response is, is being followed by officers and I, I certainly place on record my thanks. Um, anyway, coming to the more the more the, the, the legal bit, um, I'm asking I'm recommending that the cabinet note the contents of this report. Um, secondly, that a further report is received by Cabinet in respect of the Council's investigations under Section 19 Flood and Water Management Act 2010, which the Council will prepare in conjunction with the appointed specialist consultants. And thirdly, that the, this report is referred to the Council's Environment and Regeneration Scrutiny Committee for their consideration. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to problem. Um, and I know I had a discussion with the Minister, with, um, Minister of Housing and Local Government about uh, the grant aid that was available previously, and I know that's now come through, and it's available for so for some some support, and I will only say some support, uh, but at least that's been and that's been progressed by our officers within finance at Regen too, who have worked endlessly uh, in terms of some of the grants during the pandemic, and they just again slipped into into working on that too. So uh, again, yes, congratulations to all our staff. I think in terms of that. Um, Right, you vote the recommendations. Um, they're fairly straightforward in that uh, it's a holding report, goes to the scrutiny committee, and we'll have a further report when that's finalised uh, in hopefully in March. Yes? Okay, good. Thank you. Then we come to um, item 13 of any items that I have urgent under part one. Um, and in fact, I do. Um, this is a report of the Local Democracy and Boundary Commission for Wales. It was a review of the electoral arrangements for the county uh, and their final recommendations report. Uh, it needs it needs to be dealt with uh, at this stage. Um, Eddie, do you want to present this report, please? Yeah, thank you, Leader. OK. Um, OK, the Local Democracy and Boundary Commission for Wales Commission was a duty under the S29 of the Local Government Democracy Wales Act 2013 to review the electoral arrangements for each principal area at least once every 10 years. The Commission commenced its review of the Velga Morgan Council on 8th of May 2019, and the Council provided comments on the Commission's proposal as part of stage one of the review by 30th of July 2019. At stage two of the review, the Commission published this draft proposal's report and reopened its suspended consultation, suspended due to the COVID-19 pandemic, on the 1st of September 2020 and closed on the 20th of October 2020. This report contains a link to the Commission's final recommendations report published on 5th of February 2021 and outlines the Commission's final recommendations to Welsh Government. The timescale for comments to be submitted to Welsh Government and recommends that the Commission's report as noted with no further suggested comments. Councillors are aware of this um, report and um, as I just explained, there's been several stages. It has been reported to Council um, previously and the proposals are listed, initial pros, proposal were listed from the Commission in 1-4 and it went to Cabinet on the 1st of September, 7th of September, sorry, and um, the Cabinet made some suggestions to uh, some of the Commission's proposals. Um, unfortunately, when it came to full Council, um, the Cabinet proposals are set out in the minutes of the um, 7th of uh, September 2020 were not approved. Um, so basically, um, we didn't put our, forward our views. Nevertheless, the Commission's come up with its own um, way forward now. It's got its own proposals. And these are now out for um, people to um, comment on, on their own if they so wish. So 
So the recommendations for this are that the cabinet recommends to council the local democracy and boundary commission for Wales recommendations for the Vale Morgan's council electoral arrangements as detailed in its February 2020 final recommendations report be noted with no further suggested comments. The cabinet notes the deadline for comments to Welsh government regarding the local democracy and boundary commission for Wales final recommendations report by the 19th of March 2021. And it'd be noted that any comments on the recommended names of the electoral wards as detailed in the local democracy and boundary commission Wales final recommendation report be submitted to the Welsh Government's Minister for Housing and Local Government. And that this report be referred to Scrutiny Committee, Corporate Performance and Resources for information as an urgent item subject to the agreement of Councillor um, Wilson and to Council for consideration on 10th of March 2021. Um, I don't think there's much more to add to that. that some of the recommendations that in, were initially concerned about um, from the council have been addressed by the commission. So I'm, I'm hoping that um, f from these recommendations that uh, we'll, we'll, we'll obviously move them forward and that um, council have have an opportunity to make a comment on the 10th of March, but we'll leave it at that. So I so move. Okay, can I can I make one alteration? Because there's something I just noticed, and that's on uh, on regulation uh, recommendation four, it's sent to the scrutiny committee for information. Can I actually say that it should be sent there for consideration? Because um, because uh, we don't send information reports anymore, um, um, and it's up to them if they want to consider it or otherwise. So we're not will give 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 them that opinion. Um, and there's only one thing just to just to confirm is that because um, it does sound a bit. Uh, strange. If this is the final recommendations of the rec of the commission, which they have submit, which they have submitted to Welsh government, and therefore any comments that we go to Welsh government before Welsh government uh, decide on on um, can, uh, on on accepting it or otherwise. Uh, but clearly, also the Welsh government have given assurance that uh, the order will be made in a timely manner if, uh, and before and in advance of. The May 22 local government election. So it does mean that these will take place at the next local government elections. But I take your point. We made comments to council. Council rejected them, and council decided not to make any comments. So at this stage, I think there's no point in making any further ones. Yeah, I agree. And, and you're quite right. It is important to recognise it. The you know the option for members to to make comments as they so free. And, and and presumably they will, if they are going comments, it'll come forward to report to council. If not, we will um, we will just decide it there to make a decision on, 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 on whether or not we make any comment to our government or otherwise. But clearly, yeah. if it goes anything like it did last time, we won't be. No. Okay. Good. Thank you. Is, um, everybody agrees with the recommendations, please. Good. Thank you very much. Um, I don't have any other item which is urgent, but I do have item number five, which is the pay policy um, paper. Um, and at this stage, um, I'm going to ask our senior members to, to leave, our officers, I should say, to leave. Um, there is a bit of a complication in this report in that uh, there is a, some changes to be made to the appendix, and I will uh, make those once. Uh, well, I don't know if people want to stay on in the meantime, but, but before we make a decision, they will leave. The only one that will uh, remain will be uh, Ma Matthew Swindell, who is uh, takes our um, uh, takes our minutes and um, if we need any support or before you take a decision Tracy Dickinson who is the head of uh, HR is here to ask to give you any um, comments or or um, advice uh, should it be necessary um, I will refer you to the fact that there is a, a, a table item and the table item is the changes to the employee to the employee policy uh, document which is appendix a and as a result i will be making some differences changes to the, the recommendations before you and i will try um, and and make it um understandable let me put it that way um this is this is to ask um, the cabinet to consider and endorse the council's annual pay policy for 21 22 um, and to set out the its submission to council for approval this is a matter that needs council approval and it will go to council on the 11th of um, March. 
March. <coughs> Excuse me. The council does have a statutory requirement and uh, and a law to prepare pay policy settlement for the new for each new financial year. Uh, it needs to be approved by council and it needs to be published by the 31st of March. Hence, it's here today, and in fact, it will go to council for in, in, uh, endorsement. Hopefully, the framework is for ensuring that employees were rewarded fairly and objectively in accordance with the service needs of the council, and there was an openness and transparency in relation to the process. The policy has, has been incremental and it's been developed since 2012 uh, to incorporate following in issues in terms of the guidance from Welsh Government, the changes as prescribed by Welsh Government to stand in orders amendments, uh, which took effect from the 1st of July uh, 2014. Uh, it, it, it considers the changes as prescribed by the Local Government Wales Act 2015 to, to, to ensure that any proposed changes to the salary of chief officers were made following the consultation with the Independent Remuneration Panel for Wales. It also considers the Local Government Election Wales Act 2021 and they've been taken into account as part of the annual policy review, or well, there will be by the time we finish this. Necessary refinements as a result of changes to the Council's senior management structure over the recent years and the effects of national and local negotiation pay and associated benefits towards um, and, and along with the provisions of the national living wage. I, I'll, I'll come. Uh, there are some changes to the to the recommendations, but uh, basically, um, the pay policy is, is there is produced. It's an effort, as I said, to make uh, take a broader approach to the requirements. Um, in a, in addition to that, uh, there are some changes within the, the report, which I will uh, try and ad address for you. Um, in the in the in the revised. Um, Pay policy, which is the new appendix that you should all have, uh, which which will which has been tabled today. Um, it, there are changes in the selections in the highlights, and I will highlight those for ease of reference for anybody who hasn't got a copy of that. Um, basically, if you if you look at the items on page on two point four. Um, as I said, the pay policy has been produced. It takes a broader approach to the requirements of the Act, and as such, reference is made to the pay of other relevant groups in the policy statement. Um, the members are aware that pay policy has had an incre incremental development since 2012 and incorporated in, in those items which are bullet point on 2.4. The last one talks about the local government election Wales 2021 have been taken into account as part of the annual pay policy. Actually, they haven't been properly. Um, because it's a new, new, new um, bit of legislation, and but the amended uh, appendix will do that. Um, the UK government has introduced a cap on the amount of money paid, uh, many public sector employees can pay when the employer leaves the employment. It also applies to employees leaving the public sector and employment from the 4th of November 2020. The regulations, amongst other things, restrict the payment of redundancy and severance payments to £95,000. For, work, uh, forces, for workforces of prescribed bodies. Um, the implications for this council severance arrangement will be reviewed accordingly. Um, as it, there, there are going to be some changes during the course of the year and members will be uh, kept appraised of the evolving detail as necessary and they will be incorporated into the future pay statements. Uh, but as I said, this needs to go to uh, initially to the scrutiny committee, then to council for consideration. In terms of the changes, um, the report and it's been now been written with regard to the Local Government of Wales Act 2021, which has recently uh, been approved by Welsh Government and actually was enacted quicker than anybody thought, I think. But unfortunately, the section on the election uh, does on the elections in particular, because the Local Government uh, review, if you remember, it covered lots of things in relation to uh, elections. And that it doesn't adequately take the new act into account as it refers to what will soon be outdated payment systems. Hence, there's sections 625 to 623 have been reworded to reflect this. And I will go, I will refer to each of them if you don't mind, because I think we need to be sure what we're doing. Section 67 has, has been amended to reflect the requirements of the same act to designate a chief executive to. Um, so in referring this report to scrutiny on the 11th, 
Uh, it just makes reference to the amended. We do have to make obviously reference to the amended appendix. Secondly, the issue covered with, um, above will, will require further work, as I said, in you, as these issues referenced above will need to be worked on and a way forward agreed, particularly with regards to elections. So I can so I can suggest additional. So I'm going to suggest an additional recommendation three to cover that. Um, what I want to do, if I can, if you don't mind, is refer you to the Appendix A that is there before you. In terms of um, 6.7, um, there was a the the the, the, the initial one uh, stopped at uh, it says pay levels for all such officers are as evaluated using the Hay Group job evaluation scheme. There is a new section placed within there, which um, I, I won't read unless anybody really wants me to, but it is a new section at the end of 6.7. I will also refer you to 6.20 um, because that has slightly changed um, as has um, section 6, 6.21. Uh, basically in 6.20 uh, they incorporated some of the allowances um, and they it's now been set out slightly differently, although it does give the same um, the same impact because it does talk about the fact that Section 151 officer, monitoring officer, each received a fixed allowance of £10,000 odd to reflect the senior head of service responsibility to, uh, to the council's resources directorate and static responsibilities as appropriate. And again, the deputy Section 151 officer and deputy monitoring officer receive a fixed allowance of 2200 then it changes slightly because all other pay related NJC uh, book employees are the subject of either national or local negotiated rates. The latter rates are set out in the single status collective agreement as referred in 6.2. And if you go to 6.222, then the council does talk about the number of joint appointments the council has and, and the way that those are, are, are funded. Then if I take you to 6.27, that has now changed. So all items from 6.27 through to um, 6.33 are new, and I will I will so I'm referencing them for your information. Um, and 6.34 um, is renumbered, so that there is there is a, a kind of renumbering if you want. I'll also uh, uh, refer you to uh, section 13, which is the reviewing of the policy. Um, and what it says is the council will ensure that the policy is updated annually, reviewed and considered by the cabinet and scrutiny committee uh, prior to consideration and approval by council in, in line with the requirements. Then it is added, with, sorry, requirements of the Localism Act 2011. And then it's added any further necessary amendments prior to the next annual review and following imp implementation of the new provisions referred to within the Local Government and Election Wales Act 2021 as set out within the body of the this policy can be undertaken under permitted powers pursuant to section 39 of the Localism Act. And the reason that this is changed because there are several issues in, in terms of fees paid to uh, electoral returning officers is now being updated and particularly in terms of uh, 6.27 to, to the to the end, um, and obviously there is the also the change in, in the managing the managing or managing director will currently uh, no longer be able to be called managing director, but will have to be called chief executive. So um, I know it's clear as mud, but I, but I wanted to make sure that anybody watching this or refers to it are perfectly clear where the changes are. The first one is a recommendation is to consider the requirement. Uh, so I don't know if, if anybody else wants to leave at this stage or any, anybody got any comments on this before I move the recommendations. Eddie. You're on mute, you're on mute, you're on mute. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, Lee, I just want to um, just make, make it clear that see, I, you recognise and there's quite a few changes there and the, the, the reason you're coming going through those in detail is because some of those changes come about since the cabinet papers have been sent out. So, and then, you know, I just don't want um, people to think that we've just come up and we're doing this on the hoof. Um, just consider a bit of work going in the background. And you're rightly so. There are mechanisms in place for uh, consideration by the scrutinies and before it goes to council. And all those details that you've just given us, which we've discussed previously today, um, to, to um, be endorsed. So, uh, yeah, quite a considerable change going with the um, regulations. Yeah. 
in, in, indeed, thank you very early for that. I think the, the, the point was that this this was written before the act was in act with the local government uh, or called, what's he called? Some, uh, That's it, wasn't it? Uh, elections. Or I can't remember, whatever. Yeah. The local government election bill um, yeah. was, was, was in act, was passed by the by Welsh government. We expected it to be um, endorsed in April. In fact, it's already been enacted, so that's why we've had to make these changes very quickly. Um, I don't know if anybody else has got any comments to make. Um, I know Tracy's still with us. I don't know if you've got any comments to make, Tracy, before, uh, in relation to the body of the report, not not the, not the recommendations. No, nothing. Thanks, Neil. I think he summarised it fine. Are you happy for me to leave? Yes, please. OK. Um, I think everybody's now left uh, apart from cabinet members and uh, Matt, who is taking, who is a cabinet officer and, and taking the minutes. So I'm going to change the recommendations because there were there some changes in relation to the um, both the uh, scrutiny committee and the cabinet uh, and the council uh, dates. So when I'm going to recommend that uh, to, that we 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 adopt uh, accept the changes to the council's policy for 21-22 as set out in the report and incorporated in the revised statement on the new and tabled Appendix A. Two, the, to endorse the pay policy and refer it for consideration to Scrutiny Committee Corporate Performance and Resources, which now has been changed from the 17th to the 11th of February for final consideration and approval by the Council, which is also changed to the 10th of March 2021. I'm also going to then um, substitute or put in a recommendation three that the cabinet receives a further report to be referred on to full council, setting out the proposed amendments to the council's pay policy as referenced in section 6.7. As I say, that's relatively changed now, relating to the job designation of the managing director and section 625 to 633 under the heading election payments. And the reasons for that is to make the further necessary amendments following the implementation of the new provisions referred to under the permitted powers pursuant of th section 39 of the Localism Act 2011. Further to Monday's meeting, um, then, uh, to, sorry, further today, we will obviously inform the Chair of Corporate Performance and Resources Scrutiny Committee that we've, we have a new appendix and that then can be circulated to all members of, of, of it says here, all members of scrutiny committee but i think actually should be sent out to all members of council because anybody's entitled to to come to that committee and for completeness um we'll we we've, we've dealt with the declarations of interest um with with those members so um I, the, the new rec the, the 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 updated recommendations one and two and the third recommendation three uh can i formally move please so I don't mean you've got any comments, and I'm sorry if I, if I, that wasn't made clear, but it was um, a, a quite a quite a substantial change. So uh, that's agreed. Yes. Okay. Good. Um, I have no other items under part one, and I have no items under part two either. So can I thank you all for your attendance, um, and I'm sure I will see you again all very soon. But in the meantime. Please stay safe and look after yourselves. Regards.